Yes, the silver-haired Dami Mommy is back, y'all. That's right. Shinhoff has come back to Genshin Impact. Yes, for her rerun. And again, I've already talked about, you know, the crimes against the other, you know, Cryo Dami Mommy Eula, but I'm very happy with the fact that Shinho is back. Not only am I the only one that she, that's happy she's back, it seems like a lot of people are in general. So today we're going to be talking about how you should be building your Shinho and why. What is going on my dudes? Tasha here, of course, back again with another Genshin Impact video. If you guys like the content, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. Hit that notification bell to be notified when the next Genshin Impact video comes out. And of course, leave a comment. Would love to hear your guys' opinion. But without any further delay, let's go ahead and get right into it. Yeah, so as you see here, we have Shin Hub. Thicker than a gosh darn snicker. I'm just saying, man. Look, oh my goodness. They knew exactly what they were doing. I think they, they nerfed Rosaria so that they could put Shin Hub out there. I'm just saying. But yes, Shin Hub is kind of like a battery slash support character to be honest or at least that's how i feel she is a lot of people might disagree but she's definitely not a dps i'll tell you that right now um but yes she helps out with shredding cryo resistance which is really really big for her now let's go ahead and talk about her abilities first let's talk about her skill uh this is the spirit or spring spirit summoning sorry this is her E. The Frosted Dew, Silvery, and Dense shall exercise all demons. Grants all nearby party members the Icy Quill effect that deals cryo damage in different ways based on when it, uh, whether it is pat, pressed or held. So kind of the same as Mika. Uh, press rushes forward together with the Talisman Spirit, dealing cryo damage to opponents along the way. And then if you hold it, commands the Talisman Spirit to deal AoE cryo damage. With the Icy Quill effect, when normal charge or plunging attacks, elemental skills, or elemental burst deal cryo damage to opponents, the damage dealt is increased based off of Shinho's current attack. She is an attack scaler for the battery, so that's, that's why that's important. The Icy Quill effects will be cleared once its duration ends and after being triggered a certain amount of times. When held rather than pressed, the Icy Quill's effect lasts longer and can be triggered more times. When one cryo damage instance strikes multiple opponents, the effect is triggered multiple times based on the number of opponents hit. The number of times the effect can be triggered is calculated independently for each party member with the Icy Quill. Now, she works really well in Cryo because of the fact that mo the two DPSs, Ganyu and Ayaka, hit multiple opponents on their burst and skills. So that's really, really good. Then we get into the burst, Divine Maiden's Deliverance. Unleashes the power of the Talisman Spirit, allowing it to roam free in the plane, dealing AoE Cryo damage. The Talisman Spirit then creates a field that decreases the Cryo resistance and physical resistance of opponents within it. It also deals periodic cryo damage to opponents within the field. Now, the first ascension passive, an active character within the field, created by Divine Maiden's Deliverance, gains 15% cryo damage. So you wanna make sure that you're in that field to also get a little bit of extra cryo damage bonus. Spirit Communion Seal, uh, which is the second or fourth Ascension passive. After Shinho uses Spirit Spring Summoning, she will grant all nearby party members the following effects. Press Elemental Skill and Elemental Burst damage increased by 15% for 10 seconds, or if you hold it, Normal Charge and Plunging Attack damage increased by 15% for 15 seconds. It's really dependent on what DPS you're going to use for her. Now, her kind of passive talent gains 25% more rewards when dispatched on leeway expeditions for 20 hours. I actually use her consistently for those expeditions. So this isn't nothing new to me. Let's go ahead and talk about her distribution. I went with 5150, um, but honestly, you don't need crit for her. At least that's how I feel. You want to mainly focus on getting that attack stat up. You don't need the crit rate, crit damage. It's not that important. Energy recharge as well is probably a good one. <clears throat> It wouldn't be a Tasha video without a yawn. But this is where I messed up on my initial uh, Shinho build is that her, <laughs> her, uh, her, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty upset about how I built my Shinho originally. So as you could kind of see, I have a two piece Blizzard, two piece Noblesse thinking that she was going to be able to do a decent amount of damage, but that's not her. She's not a damage dealer. So that's why. I wouldn't suggest building her like this. I'm gonna go over what you should do. But first, let's talk about our weapons. 
I went with the Vortex Finisher just for the attack, but honestly, you could even use other stuff like Engulfing Lightning to get that energy recharge up. Um, I think that's a wonderful idea. I've seen people do that. Uh, the new Weight Breakers Fin, which I have not leveled up yet, but this one is a good four-star option. Uh, and of course, you could always go with Favonius Lance, getting that energy recharge up. I think for this uh, thing, I'm gonna use the Engulfing Lightning. I'm gonna take a decrease in attack, but I am gonna get that energy recharge that I so desperately need. For your artifact sex, sex for your artifact set sorry like her thickness got to me for artifacts you want to do a two piece two piece attack in my personal opinion because you're getting you're wanting to scale that attack as much as you can plus as you just saw with me taking this weapon off it's definitely going to need to boost up the attack that's why this is pretty bad but two piece two piece works out as well the only thing is that i wouldn't i wouldn't suggest this blizzard strayer is not going to help you with shinhua now, you could even go four piece no bless. I think that's the better option, uh, especially with what you're trying to do. Or honestly, just go with the two piece, two piece, and you'll be fine. Now, with the team that I'm on, this is not going to be an optimal team. I just kind of want to show you what she's able to do, right? So, as you can see, I have Ganyu, I have Dia, and I have Mika. This is my companionship team, actually. And that's the funny thing. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a. Ganyu burst hit. I'll do I'll do three of them on Masanori with Shinhua before and after. But we're gonna go ahead and get her uh, burst ready to go because I think that's gonna be the tall tale thing. Let's go ahead and get the spar going. Take your true form. I really need to get her energy up. Come on. Which is in strike. All right, so, oh, let's see, let's go. So this is, oh, wow, I missed. So as you can see, 1633, 1810, come on. 35, so pretty consistent. Now we're gonna activate this. Just to kind of show off what she could do. 39. I can't believe this guy did that. Why would you do this to me? Neutralizing threats. Let's get it on. All right, but you saw, like overall, Transfiguration. it was doing a lot better. But this guy kind of screwed with me for a second. We're gonna try and get it back up again. You asked for it. I still like that you could just jump and stop that, which is pretty nutty. Oh wow, I can't believe I missed that. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're going to show it off again. Now that we're in the field. Let me go ahead and grab that. 48. 39. So as you can see, it's a pretty significant boost, right? Pretty significant for Shinha. And a lot of people slept on her because of the fact that they didn't understand how she worked at first. But I think now as we get into this different type of, uh, uh I, I want to say meta in the sense, not really a meta, but now that we get into this new team synergy type of, uh, comp going on for Genshin Impact, it's pretty adamant that you have Shinhu as part of either your cryo damage bonus teams or your physical damage bonus teams. Um, I made a error in my Mika video where I had said that she only did cryo damage and that was very dumb of me because she does physical resistance shredding as well. But there's no denying how good Shin Hu is good or how, how good Shin, Shin Hu is, sorry, on cryo and physical damage teams. So I would definitely say that if you're wanting to run one of those two teams, it's definitely worth the time to actually get her. Overall, I think she's a great support. I'm gonna probably end up rebuilding her to the two piece, two piece so I can get that attack up and focus more on her just having that attack percentage because I think that that's what's going to be the bigger beneficial to her than any cryo damage could. I would say for your sands, attack percentage, uh, probably for uh, your uh, 
goblet and your circlet as well focus on that attack percentage because you're not going to do cryo damage with her that's not what she's going to be used for so but yeah i think that she's good uh as you saw with just what she could do right there pretty amazing but think about what i could have done with her with the other stuff i can't wait to try her out again the next time she comes out i'll have an updated video for you guys for sure Now guys, let me know what you think. Do you think Shinhua is one of those must need battery users or attack uh, buffers that you need for, you know, Ganyu and uh, Ayaka? Let me know in the comments down below. Of course, guys, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to entertain you. We will be back again with another Genshin Impact video very soon. And guys, I hope to see you soon. Take care and be safe, y'all.